is Ruhi? Well, actually, the word Ruhi itself means spiritual. And what we do is we have study circles and we do these online or in person. And they're a safe space for each person to examine their spiritual matters. And what we look at, especially in the beginning classes, are such as prayer, meditation, life and death, and the development of the soul. And also we look a lot with uh, society and how your spiritual influences take place in society as well. And just a little bit about the Rui Institute. Uh, it was established in Colombia in the early 1970s, but now it's expanded throughout the whole world. And it's really picked up a lot of momentum in the last 10 years. So there's 14 books in total, and they're all designed to have like be more interactive and participatory, the way you learn, discover. And it's really based on the Baha'i writings and principles. And there's also a lot there about building communities and working towards service. So that's another thing that we do also in Ruhi. What is your role as a Ruhi facilitator and what is your spiritual background? My role as a, a Rui facilitator, uh, how I look at it is that I'm no better than anyone else. Um, we're all equal. We're all the same. So I'm learning the same as anyone else. We've done about 25 Rui classes in the last two years. And every single time I'm learning something new. So I, I'm there just to kind of facilitate and just, you know, read along with everybody and answer the questions together. So I, I really feel like it's a joint um, mission that we do together during these classes. So my spiritual background, uh, well, I've always been a seeker of truth. I believe that's kind of what brought me here to the Baha'i faith. Uh, I was born Catholic, baptized Catholic. I went through Catholic high school, Catholic, actually through Catholic college even, and um, or Christian college. And then when I was young, about in my early teens, I became an evangelical Christian. I had a very influential aunt that used to send me Bible stories and different books um, on Jesus and etc. So I became very close. I feel like I gave up kind of my whole life to Jesus and God and, and it felt really great. I had amazing things happen to me. Um, and then I had horrible things happen to me and I turned away from God. So I tried that and definitely didn't work. Uh, and I found myself um, into a Nishram Buddhism where we chant Nam Myoho Renge Kyo. And I did that for 11 years. I was very active. I moved to America. I lived in the Netherlands then for a while. And then I moved to America and I discovered the Baha'i faith and I read The Seven Valleys, which if you haven't read, is a beautiful book. And after reading that, I was like, oh, wow, this is really truth. And I really believed in Baha'u'llah's revelation and became a Baha'i a little, little more than two years ago. I've been a Baha'i now. Are participants in the, the Ruhi class mostly Baha'is? Uh, interestingly, not actually. Um, we actually have more people that are not Baha'is that join our classes. Uh, and each class does have a, a um, I, I'd say about like kind of like 35% is Baha'i and then the rest non, you know, seekers, we would say. And uh, it, it just, is, it's wonderful because like, again, I'm no expert <laughs> and it's wonderful to have other Baha'is, you know, helping with the non-Baha'is and we all learn together. So having people from all different religions, I mean, we've had Christians and Muslims and Buddhists and um, all forms of different kinds of Christians. And it's been a great experience to be with all different kinds of religions together, studying spiritual matters, right? So we all learn from each other. So what are the group dynamics like? And do people feel a connection to each other? Absolutely. For me, it's the best part of being a facilitator of Rui is building these uh, communities. I feel that we're building friendships and fellowship together. And you'd be surprised how many people are really like, they they like to come back and back and back and back because they get close to the group that they're with. And they become friends outside the group. We get to spend time together in person. Um, of course, because of COVID for two years, we've been online, which has been wonderful to have people from all over the country. I mean, we have people from California and C Seattle. We have some, we have actually a beautiful youth class that we're doing for under 30. It's my most uh, pride and joy of, of what I've done this last couple of years with Ruby. Uh, and we have a young man from Honduras, David, and he is just there every week and just is, is really, really, uh, you know, shows what what you can do in Rui when you bring together a whole community of people. And uh, it's been a wonderful experience. What do you think people are looking for in terms of spirituality? And does it vary depending on age, race or different parts of the country? So what people are looking for in spirituality, I like to quote my dear friend, Steve Sorowitz, when he says that we're really looking for spiritual food, right? We get nourished from, you know, we, we have to eat right, we have to exercise, but we also have to work on our spiritual muscles, our spiritual inner core, because that's what we are, right? We're spiritual beings um, 
you know, on this earth together. And so I'm finding that people really love to talk about, talk about spiritual matters because not many places do you get a chance. I think, you know, we do a class about an hour, hour and 15 minutes, some an hour and a half. Um, and people just find it a wonderful way for once a week to come and talk about spiritual matters, come together. And then the second part you asked if, um, if it varies between age or, or location, things of that nature. And, and I would say no, because you know, everyone comes with their own truth. And as Baha'is, you know, one of the major principles is independent investigation of truth. And in this, they, they really have the chance to express their truth and it's safe environment. There's no judgment and nobody's right or wrong. And we all learn from each other. Um, because I was an Eastern Buddhist for so long, there was a one beautiful lady, Rachel, has become a good friend of mine. And she, we, we talk about Buddhism sometimes <laughs> for like 15, 20 minutes in the class, we'll share... All, all these things about Buddhism, because of course, with regressive revelation, Buddha is just as important as Baha'u'llah or Jesus or Muhammad. So we all share together and it's been a wonderful thing. So I haven't seen much difference because even when you take the young people, they, they're getting just as much enjoyment and nourishment from these classes than, you know, I have people from, I guess you would say maybe ages 17 up until probably in their late seventies, eighties that are doing these classes. And I don't see any difference with the uh, their spiritual quest. You have a, a unique position to hear what's on people's minds and, and their inner thoughts. What has surprised you the most of what you've heard? So you, you mentioned that I have, I have a unique um, position being able to be with, uh, with so many people. And, and I mean, it, it's probably over a hundred people we've, we've been with, you know, this last couple of years. And, and uh, it is, it's a beautiful experience. I'm humbled every day. I love what I do. I, I, I'm absolutely humbled by it. The, what surprises me the most with people's uh, inner feelings and things like that is, to be honest with you, it's it's that they keep coming back. <laughs> Sometimes I get surprised that they just they just want to keep returning. And I mean, we've had people that have been with us, you know, seekers that have been with us from day one. You know, this is two years ago, so they're already on book five. You know, and it's kind of like, okay, what's next? Book six. You know, so we're just moving along. So I think the biggest thing that surprises me that especially non-Baha'is are, are, are get so much spiritual nourishment from this, that they, they want to come there and, you know, no one feels pressured. You know, you're never asked to become a Baha'i. This isn't what it's about. You know, we're not here to, you know, convert you or something like that. It's just a matter of just, you know, spreading this love together and sharing together. That's what it's about. And really building fellowship and friendship and, what what what's really great too is that we're we do service projects. We we're really aiming towards doing more and more service projects together. And uh, last year, we had the idea of you know hosting a picnic for the Rui uh, you know seekers. And before you know it, it became this huge you know community event that we held in Bronzeville. It was first annual. We'll do another one this year, September seventeenth. So if anyone wants to come in Bronzeville, that's when it'll be. And um, it's just amazing that that from from a small little group of five, six people talking about what kind of service project can we do? It turned into where like hundreds of people came to this Bronzeville community and so many Baha'is came out and so many people helped in the community donating, you know, gift bags and, and school supplies, et cetera, et cetera. So it's, it was really for the community. And uh, that's my biggest joy and my biggest surprise that these beautiful things can come out of very small numbers of people doing great things. There's a number of, of Ruhi books on different topics. The first one, though, is about spirituality. Could you talk maybe a little bit about just the different books? Definitely, definitely. So when it comes to the Ruhi books, um, what, what, what are the differences or, or what are they? So there's 14 of them, and uh, they range from the first one, which is Reflections on the Life of the Spirit, all the way down to, you know, Social Discourse, which is the 14th one, which we're actually doing with a group on Saturdays. And so we have um, the first one, uh, it's such a beautiful book. Uh, there, there's some questions in there that 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 just changed my life, and I see it changing other people's lives. And literally, I'm not even, you know, it's 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 real. And the thing is that really, what it helps is people start to get reflective. A big part of it is like backbiting, you know, talking behind people's backs. You know, sometimes you don't even realize you're doing that, even in your own head. And so these, I see the the aha moments going off in people's brains. And then touching their hearts where they're like, whoa, do I do that? Or like, me, let me examine, you know, lying, you know, things like this. And we, we talk about these things in such a deep way that it opens people up to change their lives, really. And then uh, the, the, uh, the third section of book one, well, the second, second one's about prayer, kind of like living your life as a prayer. So we really go into what kind of how do you pray? How do you meditate? Everyone does it different. Every, it's your own personal way. 
Um, and the last part of that section is uh, life and death. And that's always interesting conversations. Um, the Baha'i perspective really opened up my, my mind and my heart quite a lot on, on how the Baha'i see it. And uh, it's wonderful to share that with, with non-Baha'is and, and have really enlightening, deep conversations about uh, life and death. So I would say, you know, Rui One really signifies a lot of bringing together and examining your own spiritual matters and, and how it affects you in your own life. Well, thank you, Cheryl. Thank you very much. Namaste. Thank you, Susan. Namaste.